Welcome to the very first episode of our document experiment, documentary experiment, Better Than I Can Imagine. I am Tisha, and I am the host of Slightly Unmeditated Podcast, and uh, we also have Find Your Center on there on the on the podcast channel. And through this amazing podcast experience, I have met Regis, who can tell about yourself. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, my name is Regis. I am the host of Spiritual Shit You Need to Know podcast, and I met Tisha through a podcast episode that we did together. Yeah. I was on her episode on her podcast. Um, I'm also a yoga teacher. I've got lots of woo-woo experiences, and um, yeah, I'm just here to share all that with you. So it's hard to sum up everything, how all this is going to work, because we don't know. So <laughs> we've called this a documentary experiment. Um, part of it was born because I've been wanting to do a documentary. It's been on my list for so long, and I thought, why not? Let's do it now. And also because when I met Regis, I felt like I had met myself in a way that is so woo-woo and weird. <laughs> now, if you haven't listened to Slightly Unmeditated, my mission is to take the woo out of woo-woo. So for two years, I've been kind of learning from all different kinds of teachers and practitioners about all the different aspects of spirituality. That's how I came across Regis's podcast because I was just looking for guests to talk to about whatever. And I, I did not expect what happened between us. Um, the way I explain you to other people is you're the first person to ever speak universe <laughs> yeah. in the way that I did. So there's probably a lot more people can learn just by listening to our podcast, if that was the case. And um, they're on, mine are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get them. I think you are as well. Yep, all the same you... ones. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> and then one day I'll be on yours to, Absolutely. Prom to promote this documentary experience. All right. So this was last February-ish when mm -hmm. we recorded together. <laughs> and I ended up calling the podcast episode Raising the Vibe with Regis because I left that episode really with a deep understanding of what raising my vibration means at that time, because I was just like, my brain was swirling. Like, I cannot believe I just met some person that spoke <laughs> like this. So I don't know. We really did. We talked here and there after that episode. Yeah. A couple times, but not like consistently. Uh, nope. No. And then kind of recently we've been like, and I'm feeling it. Hey, <laughs> you want to talk? Back and forth a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that in, in February, you were like, we're meant to do something together. Like you said it almost immediately after we had that episode. And I'm like, yeah, we just had such a good connection and we had such a good episode that I think we kind of knew we were going to be in touch with each other yeah. from that point on. We just didn't kind of know to what extent. Um, and so, like you said, we were kind of off and on talking here and there and then, I think as usual, like life happens, you get busy, all this other stuff, you know, we get through the summer and then things just kind of start <laughs> happening. Yeah. Life. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And also I should mention, we have so many, we have obvious differences. I'm older than you. You live in, on the East coast, but in the South part, I live mm -hmm. in the North part. Um, but we're both Sagittariuses. Yep. We... I'm sure people will come to understand how we speak alike in a lot of ways, just yeah. having to, having the experience. Um, We've what got the else? same human design profile, which we'll talk about that. We're manifesting generators. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, just kind of one thing after the other. And honestly, my whole life, I really didn't meet too many other Sagittariuses. Yeah. Like, and see, I know a ton <laughs> and I hate it sometimes. Well, I'm not astrologically intelligent. Like, I don't really get a lot of it. I, I retain what I need to get and then for myself, and yeah. that's pretty much it. I can't tell you where the moon is and what and stuff. Oh, well, but, yeah. It gets complicated. Yeah. So we each have our own um, different, like, spiritual skills, I think, things that you do, I don't do, and vice versa. Mm hmm which is sort of why we wanted to do this experiment. And essentially what the goal of the experiment is to, we feel completely stuck in this void. 
the same void, which is scarily, how scarily parallel our journeys have been and our thoughts about the whole process have been ridiculously similar. So yeah. we thought we would do this experiment where we sort of work together on our manifestation abilities, picking different things that we want to manifest without being super personal and putting everything out there, but still having some information for people to follow along. Yep. And with the understanding that two heads are better than one and two people trying to manifest is a much stronger Absolutely. energy. There's power in numbers. Yes. Even though I'm usually a solo person and so are you, I think at this point we're like, uh, let's try to do this together because we're just kind of on the same vibration. And when we get together, it's like things start to explode. And then when we separate, they kind of fizzle out. <laughs> Listen, so, that is another point, And I'm glad you brought that up. So we started talking about frequencies. Um, someone not too long ago in a conversation happened to mention something I had not understood and that I was very happy to hear <laughs> was that people do naturally vibrate on different frequencies. I realized something was going on with me because I had a lot of psychics and intuitives. Both of us also consider ourselves intuitive and yep. we do speak to our spirit guides and things just to just disclaimer. Um, but I had a lot of psychics and intuitives and mediums that have been guests on my podcast who couldn't read me. And all back then I was just so desperate for answers. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> looking outside myself um but i was so desperate for answers i would be really upset like why can't people read me or the advice the psychic advice or guidance they gave me was something i already knew and then i started having to turn that corner mm -hmm. so we're both you and i are both on this journey of like wtf where are all <laughs> our people yep why we can't find them and a couple of other things like always feeling like we're having to go through some healing process or another that's I'm telling taking you. years and years and the dark night dark shadow what do they call it dark, dark night, night of the shadow the dark night yeah. of the soul yeah dark night of the soul yeah but, but for like a decade <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm ready to get out of it yeah so now we're having a regular old conversation the other day much like right here and I'm not even sure where this, I, I've been wanting to do a documentary forever. And I think I just brought it up right at the time I brought it up though. Like these crazy synchronicities started happening between us. Yeah. <laughs> One of them I very clearly remember was the start of it was that you mentioned opening an old journal from 2020. And saying it's the same shit <laughs> that I'm going through right now. <laughs> I'm still here. And nothing has changed. And <sighs> and I, on the same very same day, right before we spoke, one of the reasons I don't like journaling is because I don't like going backwards. But I happened to find a notebook looking for something else with my journal entry from 2021, the start of 2021. Mm hmm and same thing. <laughs> I had written exactly what I would have written that day and nothing changed. And that's where we started kind of going down this road. Like, what if we did yeah. some kind of show, some kind of documentation of what we're trying to manifest and what we're going through, how we get there. And if this shit works, right. <laughs> <laughs> Does this shit work? Or am I going to keep being here? Or am I going to make these changes and how's yeah. it going to turn out? Yeah. Now, having said that, since we've talked about this, both of us feel a completely different, I won't speak for you, but I think what you've said is we both feel this completely different energy and constant signs of, yes, this is what you're supposed to do. Like there's, yeah. I was, I got a card pull from someone the other day who was like, yep, new project, new idea. This is it. This is your direction. Right before we started the show, there was a post that was basically the title of what we called this documentary, better than I can imagine, <laughs> right, like right before I hit record. So here we are, I guess we're going to, yeah, so that definitely 
I felt that I thought that was crazy. I was like, wait a minute, you just read in your journal and you don't keep your journals. I usually don't, but I've kept a few. I usually like to burn them and kind of release the energy into the atmosphere. Yeah. But that one particular day I picked it up. I was going through some storage tubs, saw a journal, opened it, said 2020. And the shit said, I feel like I'm stuck. What's going on with my life? <laughs> and so and then today, two years later, I'm like writing in my journal as we speak. What's going on in my life? I feel like I'm stuck. Um, or at least I've been feeling like that for the past two years um, since 2020. So I definitely do feel like the energy has shifted finally. I know we're still like at the beginning, so we don't really know how this is all going to turn out. Right. But I definitely feel that it is shifting. It's changing. I keep getting signs. You keep getting signs of this is what you need to do. Things are changing for you. Opportunities are coming. So I'm anxious to see what all this is going to be about. Yeah. We even had a conversation when we really started talking about what, what could a documentary be about. And, and quite frankly, we're still not sure how this is going to work out. We're just winging it. So we were going to call it, why does no one get me? Like nobody gets yeah, me. Nobody because, gets me. Because we talked <laughs> about. I yelled it out one time. Nobody gets me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, it's like that high fre higher frequency thing. And then when you find someone, I know it all sounds like woo-woo, but then when you find someone that actually operates on that frequency and you realize I'm not crazy, like yeah. this is really happening, there's going to be a lot of those kind of statements. I'm not crazy. This is really happening to me. Right. Um, it made a lot of sense. Unfortunately, there's a new song out called Nobody Gets Me. <laughs> and uh, like, I... Mm -mm. Yeah, I didn't want to get, like, you know, copyright issues and all that other stuff. And I also didn't want to come across as a, a whiny person. Like, no, but yeah. it's me. Like, I'm trying <laughs> to be a voice for people who are in this situation because right. I do get you. Yeah, I don't, I didn't, haven't had any role models up until this point. It's me meeting with all these different practitioners and spiritual people um, to, to break things down. And you just said before we started recording, <laughs> you find you're starting to do some more woo woo stuff. Yeah. More often naturally. And I feel like I have to, yeah, obviously it's not so woo woo for you now because you're learning, but a lot of what I had to go through, I wouldn't believe it. I would be completely cynical of someone else. And I'm very like, trusting <laughs> but yeah i would be very cynical if someone told me some of the stuff i've gone through like really was a thing um so 10 years ago when my journey started if i had had some kind of resource like this i think would have been amazing so i'm Absolutely. just kind of thinking we're just filling in the gaps right yeah okay and speaking of like the woo-woo stuff I will say this because now I did an episode on my podcast. It's probably like episode number five where I had like my first real spiritual awakening. Um, and I talk about like things in my childhood and how I didn't really pay attention to it, but it's somewhat always been there. A lot of us have these intuitive gifts, but we kind of shut them off as we get older. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I talked about my first spiritual awakening and how there's like, there's different phases and things that you're going to go through. Obviously I feel like I'm going through one now you are too. So just so you know, you never stop going through these spiritual awakenings, y'all. They keep happening throughout your life. <laughs> yes. um, but with that, there are different stages and different phases. And I think the more you progress on your spiritual journey or spiritual path, you know, the higher your vibe and your frequency is going to be, the more intuitive you're going to be, the more open, so to speak, your energy is going to be. So now I'm learning that clearly my vibe is way higher than it was before even within just the last year or two years hmm. that now all the woo-woo stuff that I was doing kind of here and there now I have to do it all the time because my energy is just so big and so open now yep. that I have to protect my energy even more now. So I have to sage more. And you know, if you feel called to use crystals, you have to use those, you have to do your affirmations. And like, now I have to do this stuff every day. And I'm like, really? I got to sage again. <laughs> yeah. But I... it works. So, and for me, I used to be afraid of a lot of things. I thought a lot of stuff, if I did wrong, I would open some portal to yeah. God knows where. And I was terrified of that. And I realized how far I've come from that to where 
I was in a, an experience where I was hearing some, like, knocking. Like, I felt like something was wrong. Yeah. Any other time, I'd be sleeping outside because I'm like, there's <laughs> no way. And now I was kind of realized, like, my thought pattern was I could just bring some sage and do this. And I'm like, who am I? Who am I? <laughs> what am I doing here with my life? So I just bring some shit, some sage and life is great. I'm good. Yeah. But the fact that we're so connected in so many ways is so comforting because on the flip side of everything you just said is the higher your vibration becomes and the more intuitive you become, the people in the low vibe, maybe you become less tolerant of them. Yeah. They don't. Want to have to, of you. They don't want to have anything <laughs> to do with you. And I know a point of contention for both of us is why are we by ourselves? Like, I mean, obviously we have this in common, but you don't live next door to me. Yeah. You know, and we both live in small towns where I feel like the vibration is really low. So I have to really work on my energy every day. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have the same sort of idea. Let's get out of here to a higher yeah. vibrational place to a you know something but we don't have the answers yet right of why we're specifically here right now in this situation i have a little bit of an idea when i decided to make this decision a little background on me is i worked in healthcare for seven years lived in atlanta I quit my job people thought i was crazy you're just gonna quit your job like you're not gonna have any insurance you're not gonna have any income whatever So because of my previous past spiritual awakening, you know, I know that when I feel like I'm being guided to do something by spirit, if I don't listen, well, shit hits the fan. (laughs) So the knock just kept getting louder and louder. Like, it's time for you to leave your job. You need to leave. You need to move home. So that's what I did in 2020. Quit my job, moved back home to South Carolina, where my parents live in this little small town. And I felt guided to come here and to be here. Because I knew I was going to be doing something here, but I just didn't quite know what. So two years down the road, I feel like, well, what the hell is going on? (laughs) I remember so strongly feeling about quitting my job and moving here. So is this the build up to it? Like what's happening here? Because it's been two years and I feel like something's got to change. I feel like it's changing, but yeah, I feel like I was guided to do that. So we'll see what it pans out to. Well, and in the same way, that path led us to do this. And then it, it it came really quickly clear that, like, this is what we were supposed to do. Uh, whether we make money on it, whether it yeah. helps us move in any direction, I don't know. But Spiritual growth, a lot of stuff. It's the only answer I'm getting. And we had this conversation the other day where being possibly because we're Sagittarius and impatient... Uh, spirit's only giving us a little bit of information at a time (laughs) because I think when we see a bigger picture, we're so impatient that we're just like, where is it? You got to jump the gun. Yes. I know that I am a manic manifester and I am hoping that through this process, I learn better ways of doing this than freaking out and trying to be in control. I feel myself losing that a lot, which Mm -hmm. is amazing. (laughs) Yeah. But I haven't, and I've, I've manifested some amazing experiences that are just sort of amazing on their own, but really don't relate to the path of my life. Right. Right. So I feel like they're kind of random things thrown in there. Yeah. Right. Which instead of like the, I've got the plan and this is how I want to manifest this right now. And then nothing happens. (laughs) But I also feel like those experiences that I have manifested are a beacon of hope that you are doing this, but it's not on your timeline. Yeah. You have to. Not how you think it's going to happen too. Right. Right. So I have to trust and let go. Well, trust the process has always been my nemesis you know, phrasing. I, when, people, too. when people say trust the process, <laughs> the first thing I do is roll my eyes. Uh, yep. So, Whatever. yeah. So given the fact that we both speak universe in, in a, it's just creepy. It's like our own, 
I mean, we're speaking English, but it's like our own language we understand <laughs> because there's words I don't have to say for you to get what I'm saying. Yep. So if anybody's listening and they feel misunderstood, I think the most important goal is to find those like-minded people because Absolutely. it will change your life. Yep. You, know? you have to. You have to have that like-minded community. And I think part of that, too, is kind of why I started my podcast, like you said, why you started yours is to be a voice for ourselves, but also for other people and to help hopefully find those people. And so we can all kind of attract each other and help each other out and have that community. Yeah, absolutely. And my podcast is all about my own curiosity. I just was bugging people to death to learn everything (laughs) I could. So I did, I got like a two year associate degree in spirituality (laughs) but while i was also going through this like it's really fascinating if i step back and look at it from that perspective and i do because i could be dirt poor living outside and i would still find a way to do that podcast because i need to do it for myself absolutely so here we are now with the documentary i have to say i have some minor video skills and that will be apparent (laughs) But I am a deep believer in how am I supposed to learn how to do it well if I don't have the opportunity to do it. That's it. I think we're both big dreamers. I think that we can imagine a lot of things. So better than I can imagine is still pretty exciting. Yes, it is. Like you said, from the very first time we met, I'm like, I think we're supposed to be working together. And it took a year or so, I'm like almost a year for that to happen. So I like to also put that kind of information out because people think like, well, I want to do it right now and it's never going to happen like I do. (laughs) But this, this is not something I saw coming between the two of us because we really hadn't kept in touch much, you know, and a lot of my guests were like that. Like you felt a connection, but then they just go back to their lives. Yeah. I think, you know, when you know, and I think that comes from listening to your intuition, like. And and going on that spiritual journey will, like you said, you only get a little bit at a time. Like you got the intuitive hit to start a podcast. I got one to start a podcast. I didn't know where it was going to go, what was going to happen, who I was going to meet. I just listened to that one little thing and said, okay, well, let's do a podcast, see where it goes. Then the next thing unfolds. It's an unfolding process, but and it's not have fast. to stick with it. It's yeah. not fast at all. It's not fast at all. <laughs> Not in, the, not in that kind of way, but we can both, I think, agree just in the last few days since we've talked about this, I felt completely different. I felt like I had a piece of the puzzle that was just snapped into place, and I was like, oh, finally, I can yeah. relax a little. But I will say this. Now, mm. being where I am, like you say, if, if I had the community and the like-minded people and the resources back then... I probably would have gotten here a lot quicker. So I think that's one thing I will say is my goal is providing this information and connecting to other people. Yes. I think you can speed up that process if you want to. And if you're open to it, when you have like-minded individuals around you, this will be the goal of this whole documentary. Yes. Because I think, well, that's so important to me because now my podcast crew is really cool. Like I, have a relationship with them that I could not have imagined. One's an old friend. One was a complete stranger, right? So that is just fascinating in itself to see how, what happens when like-minded people come together. Yeah. Because we both have our own podcasts that are established and listening. You have your yoga, you have a whole app, which I downloaded on my phone today. We have to talk (laughs) about that. Um, yoga with Regis is on the app store. If you're looking for a yoga practitioner, I think this is, so we decided to do this on YouTube because it it was like different than podcasting. Yeah. It was something else. And, and people, let me tell you about the YouTube situation, y'all, <laughs> the please. synchronicity, right? Yes. Well, we, we talked the other day and we were, we talk about a lot of synchronicities, which we're going to talk about. A lot here on this documentary as things come up, like we're just, our energies are so intertwined and yeah. sometimes we just can't deny it. Mm-hmm. So I think that morning I woke up, I don't know, I was thinking about my business and things that I should be doing and 
me expanding my podcast and I'm like, well, maybe I should put my podcast episodes on YouTube because I know a lot of podcasters do it. I've had heard mixed reviews. Some people say do it. Some say don't. And I just kept thinking, this is another thing that I'm going to have to try to manage. And is it even going to be worth it? So, but that immediately came to my mind, YouTube. So I'm scrolling on my phone, looking at stuff. And then I'm like, okay, I'm over it. I throw my phone away. Even though I heard <laughs> YouTube, I was like, no, she's not doing YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> right. So then later on that day, we get on a call just like this, and you pitch this to me, and you go, "What if we get on YouTube?" And I go, <laughs> "You would say YouTube." I said, "I was just thinking about YouTube this morning," and I kind of blew it off. And here it comes back up again, same day. Okay, obviously you need to get on YouTube. That's what Spirit's telling you because yeah. now Tisha has said it too. So they don't need to get off of it. That that's. I'm glad you brought that up too, because that this is sort of what I want people to understand. Like people hear about synchronicities or seeing a cardinal and it's somebody it's who died a... coming to visit you, but I don't coincidence. Think people... <laughs> right. I don't know how many people don't understand, right? Like it took me a long time to understand that anything could be a, a synchronicity. Mm -hmm. I believe it was Gabby Bernstein who first enlightened me to say, Oh, universe loves speaking through social media yeah i mean yes there are algorithms but there is also some shit that happens that's so unexplainable outside yeah. of the obvious to you know what now mm -hmm. is obvious to me also on the day we talked this was even a weirder synchronicity the same notebook i was looking in at my journal entry that was stagnated I happened to, I had gone to a conference a few months ahead of that and my notes were in there from the conference. So I happened to be like scrolling through, I found the word Merkaba. I had the word look up because it was this, per, this speaker was talking about something specific, but that was what was in there, the symbol. So we're on this conversation and what do you talk about <laughs> in a spirit card poll? Yeah. I, wish this, I, had, I may be able to pull the car. Let me see if I can find it. But um, the same exact thing. And I was just like, "What?" now listen, we're always open to synchronicities, right? We're very, we're both mindful of that. But sometimes they just hit you so hard that you're still like in man. disbelief. Like, what did you just say? <laughs> oh, I found it. Look, here's a funny thing, right? I'm going through the cars trying to see which one it is. It's the only one that's upside down. <laughs> Of course it is. Here's the card, Regis. You're looking for it right here. It's upside down. So of course yeah, it that is. That was my card that I pulled. And I don't. Am I saying that wrong? Which is I called it the Merkaba. You said Merkaba. Oh, the Merkaba. Yeah, that's how I hear it. But okay, Merkaba. Well, I'm probably saying it wrong. We're but probably anyway, never going to say it again. I showed her, and I'm like, look, there's that symbol. I said I always. There's a protection prayer that I say all the time that you center yourself inside this um, sacred geometry here. And you go, I have that on my notes. I need to look that up. <laughs> and and it truly was the only part of the notes. I was at a conference for two days. So I had a whole half a notebook full of notes. It just so happened to be that particular one that I looked at. And I was looking it up. And then here you go. I have it in my notes and I'm supposed to look it up. So, yeah, I mean, it's meant to be. Yeah, I think there was a few other things that had happened. Um, I just didn't prepare well for the. We have so <laughs> many episode. things that it's probably hard to keep up. Like, <laughs> but now, I'm glad you said that. This is also a part of the documentary experience. Uh, we need to be more accountable. Well, what we've previously agreed to do yeah. is be more accountable for our own uh, spiritual practices about documentary documenting things because mm -hmm. now we have accountability to people outside of ourselves. Yes. So what I foresee is again, not super great at editing videos, but I'd like to at least have us capture, uh, I don't want to say evidence like we're ghost hunting well, yeah. or anything. It happens. <laughs> yeah. But, to, but to make what, uh, how will we say it? Like, living in the universe you know people talk universe but then they don't live it right so right. i see that a lot people who understand the principles of law of attraction or how the universe works and everything's all oneness but they don't live like that mm -hmm. so whatever direction i'm going 
as we have discussed, we're living it more and more, even surprising ourselves by how many things we need to sage to get rid of negative energy because we don't want it to screw us up. So I think having some kind of visual representation for other people to follow, like, oh, that's what they mean by synchronicities. Because it's way more than just seeing 11, 11 on the clock. Yeah. That's absolutely like a starting point. That's part of it, though. Yeah. Over the summer, I started um, assigning meanings to different symbols. I had like three or four different things, like birds outside, for instance. Obviously, birds are common. Um, But I was having some amazing experiences where I would never see a bird. And then I would think or say something or whatever. And then all of a sudden, this flock would fly over my house (laughs) or something. (laughs) Seemingly, right? And I'm like... Huh, that's interesting, you know, or a different, a specific type of bird. Mm-hmm. Um, but I used to, again, start at this whole process for the last, you know, nine years probably, where I just thought I was doing it all wrong. Yeah. I didn't trust myself. That's Even the thing. I, yeah, I think I kind of intuitively knew, but I, I needed like convincing for all this time. Yeah, and sometimes you need that validation. And sometimes it's hard to get that validation when other people around you don't get it or you're the black sheep of the family. You're not like everybody else. So you must be the crazy one. This is how it's supposed to be. It doesn't work like that. And so you're looking for that validation. Like, am I crazy? Am I seeing this right? Am I doing this right? Am I doing it wrong? You know, and if you don't have a spiritual mentor or someone to guide you through it, it's like you just you don't know what you're doing. You're just. Or worse, when the spiritual mentors don't make sense to you. Like they don't well, resonate yeah. for you. They're not the right ones for you. Right. <laughs> but if if we could help somebody knock off a few years of finding the resources, you know, I'm not, I mean, everybody's on their journey, however long it's going to be. But I wish I had this stuff eight years ago when I first read Abraham Hicks. Yeah. You know? Did you start with Abraham? Ooh, I don't even know what I started. <laughs> I started really. So I, I dove into all this spirituality stuff. The thing that prompted it was the death of my grandmother. I was in my early twenties, even though I had already kind of been dibbing and dabbling. I was always interested in like the psychic world, what happens life after death, all these things. And so when my grandmother passed away, that was like the first closest person to me that had passed away. So I wanted to, I wanted to read up on like, well, what happens for real? Like I was Christian based, grew up in the church, read the Bible. I know all that, but what about all this other stuff? You know, Mm -hmm. do people really talk to the dead? Can you connect with your loved ones when they pass? Um, So in my early twenties, I started diving into that. So that was like a major event that kind of pushed me into it. And then um, it was Oprah's live your best life tour. Mm -hmm. This was probably back in 2000 eight, nine, somewhere around there. That's when I really started diving into it. So I think that was my push because she had some spiritual people on there. And I was like, whoa, this shit is out there, but I want more. I want to know more. Um, That. And then I used to read Sylvia Brown books because she was like the big psychic that was out at the time. So Jubilee. Here you go. (laughs) Jubilee. Sylvia Brown was my favorite because she was like the no bullshit psychic. And I was like, I need to hear what she's got to say. Yes. <laughs> she used to be on Montel a lot. A I lot. I know she had some controversy back then, but yeah, I, I get it. My, for I me, it I was fascinated by it always, but absolutely repelled by it. Like yeah. if we were out, my cousin or somebody would, would always do it. And I had, I'd, want to so badly but as soon as i get there something stopped me and i was like nope. yeah or maybe nope. you just weren't ready yet i i think i was i don't know i think i was guided away from it on purpose yeah because if i was told something in a way that ruminated in my brain i wouldn't have been able to probably Uh, I've always trusted my own tuition. So that would have wrecked that, I think. Yeah. And somebody smarter than me knew that and was like, like, oh, "Oh, nope, not yet. She's not ready for that. Send Mm -hmm. the bad vibes. Send the bad vibes. (laughs) And then ultimately, last year, 
I did talk to a psychic and it was a terrible experience. Yeah. And I'm I, like, that's crazy. Yeah. So I knew, like, I knew that. I don't know why I'm always surprised that I knew things. But here <laughs> we are. Time. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we are very similar in our intuition. You don't feel like you can, you don't communicate with the dead, do you? Um, I will say <laughs> people, people that, you know, you don't hear. Yeah. Okay. No. So I'm more so, or this could be changing. I don't know. Um, usually it's through dreams and okay. visions. They come see me, talk to me. And mostly it's, there have been other people that I'm not related to, but mostly my family members. Okay. That's what I'm dreams. asking. Yeah. yeah. Cause I don't hear any. I don't hear here like that, but uh, I can hear things. Yeah, I'm not in clear there. audience, as they say, or at least I don't think I am. If I am, it's not really developed yet. Yeah, it's. I have the the audience and the visual. I don't physically hear anything that's yeah. like whispers or like right, you walk right, into right. a the room and hear. Hearing. Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah. I don't. It's not no. like uh, the movie Ghost, you know talking to you shut up be quiet precisely yes exactly <laughs> I, like, I can't deal with it <laughs> no and i actually asked for that very early on i had read that like you could ask how you want to receive your yeah. gifts and i didn't play around i was like i don't want to see shit i don't, don't want to know <laughs> shit i don't want to hear shit you could send me pictures or whatever so uh, mostly that's how i get a very strong image or you yeah. know and since doing the podcast um I rem- I don't remember the exact episode, but I remember the experience of first feeling like I channeled something that was not my own information. Mm-hmm. I know it was me talking because I was doing the talking, but I would end and be like completely exhausted. Like, yeah, I have no idea what I just take said. it out of you. Yeah. So that's usually when I'm saying the most brilliant things. It's not me. Yeah. <laughs> it's just how you channel. Yeah, so that was enlightening because this was happening in real life and this was not something I understood that was happening for a while. Yeah. It's crazy how we get to this point, like just being more and more open. I'm like, yeah. Do you think more people are coming to this? I think more and more people are like us and, and understanding that they're like us. Yeah. I think there's a shift going on and a lot of... A lot of spiritual people that I follow especially are saying that too. And I believe it that, you know, we do have these new energetic portals that are opening up and a lot of things that are going on in the world, you know, whether or not there's a spiritual war going on, light and dark. And a lot of us here, we have these gifts and we can't really deny them anymore. Like even if we don't want them to open up or we try to shut them off, there's just a different um, vibration that's here on the earth or coming to the earth and it's like basically what i'm being told is like you get with the program or you get lost yeah (laughs) that's what's happening is there anything that's still too woo woo for you hmm just curious yeah well obviously like seeing spirits and like hearing somebody now i have had a clear audience experience before i'm not gonna lie and it wasn't i can't remember exactly what it was but I know I've heard someone say my name like clear as day before, like Regis. And I sat up in the middle of the bed and looked around. I've had that, but I haven't had like, you know, someone talking to me, talking to me, talking to me. Yeah. Don't nobody better be sitting on my bed when I wake up in the night. I will. Now that's happened to my sister. I will. She lost. She didn't see it. She could feel it. You know, you can feel someone. And I told her the same thing. Like, you know, you can, whoever it is or whatever it is, you can tell them to go away you can tell your spirit guys like, I don't want to receive messages like this. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. I can't deal with this shit. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. I've always felt that way. But I, as I said, I was in an experience where I heard things like knocking that should not have been happening and things like that. And, it, and I already had yeah. a feeling. And then it just started becoming audio apparent that, this yeah. was, that what I was saying was true. And I don't mess around like that. I don't do haunted houses. I'm, I don't pursue that because I don't yeah, want to bring anything home Dark with energy me. stuff. Yeah, because they will follow you home. And I've always felt like that since a kid. Um, yeah. So it's fascinating how I've come to... I've got some experiences like that. Yeah. So I have a brother 
who's fascinated by the paranormal will go stay in haunted places on purpose. Which I and think I f- is crazy. <laughs> well, I find it fascinating that I'm on the, the other end of that. So, like, we're both in touch with this in some way, whether he wants to admit it or not. Yeah. Um, but I'm on the other side of the fence where he's like, let me see the lights go out. And I'm like, not even a little bit. Yeah. Something that just came to me when you said that is that because, okay, obviously you and your brother are connected and you are both kind of in that realm, but just different aspects. Um, because I think about this with me and my sister, we've been told this before too, is that sometimes it also depends on like, your past lives, what you were interested in, Mm -hmm. um, things like that. You know, there's a reason why he's gravitating toward that, like why he's so fascinated by the haunted houses. And then there's also a reason why you're like, hell no, I don't want to deal with that. Something you dealt with in your past life was probably like, nope, not going down that road where maybe he was some type of investigator or something. And so he's like, pull my sister watches a lot of murder mysteries. Like that's her thing. I think that shit's crazy. Why do you want to watch all the people being murdered and how to kill my husband and, all the shit on Lifetime, like she can literally let it yeah. play and it doesn't bother her at all. And she had a reading and was told that, well, you were some type of investigator in a past life. That's why you keep being pulled to this. See, that's fascinating. Now, I don't I don't know much about my past lives. I don't really have any insight into it that I'm yeah. aware of. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do ha- actually have a local. This is crazy. <laughs> I just realized. Tell me it's crazy. I want to know. I actually have a local resource who was supposed to be on the podcast, but she unfortunately got sick and wasn't, was never able to do it. And then I stopped working with guests. I just was going through my text and I'm like, who is this? I didn't have her name in my phone and I just put it in my phone today, Mm -hmm. her name. And I thought, I wonder if we should ever meet up and here we're freaking talking about talking about it. Well, then maybe you need to, right? (laughs) That'll be interesting. Call her. Yeah, right? Yeah, I want to know how that goes. Yeah, and so that's another part. You know, um, you're only going to be able to get what you're ready to get. Yeah. And so what, take what resonates and leave the rest behind has Absolutely. always been a very good piece of advice. Do you find that the advice that you've learned through your podcast and through your own research for the last few years is now uh, so much more easier to integrate into your life like you're like oh why didn't why? oh so yeah you see okay yeah <laughs> thought it was absolutely just me. okay good <laughs> you're like oh now i understand actually just just this last week i feel like i've been getting a lot of insights mm-hmm. and i was getting hard on myself for not writing it down like maybe i should be writing this down but they're so fleeting it's sort of hard to explain. Like I can't even communicate to you what I'm learning, yeah. but it's like a little something's clicking inside that I'm like, okay, it's good enough that, you know, you don't need to write it down. I, I don't know how else to explain that. I think too, because I've, I've struggled with that a lot and I know we're going to, we're going to talk about some human design stuff too, but that was like a real eye opener for me when I learned about human design and how we have different profiles that as a manifesting generator, I'm like this. I'm all, we're all over the place. Like I've got my hand in this over here, but I'm also interested in that over there. And so me having like a specific set routine or plan all the time, it never works. And it's true. I always deviate from it. So being able to take a little bit from here and here and here has, is what works for me. And so I've had to come to terms with that because other people don't understand that. They're like, why the hell would you do that? You need to pick one thing and stick to that. And you know, yeah. And when I do that, it doesn't work. So, yeah, yeah, those things I have learned that my personality, my energy, this is how it works, is that it's okay. We want to show you this piece. Take that part. You don't have to know everything about that. You can move on to something else and keep right. that piece. So, right. And everything is, everybody's thing is different, but coming from the background of I always felt like I was doing it wrong. So... Through my podcast channel, I always, I also was getting life coached, right? Because yeah. that's what I would do. So absolutely, I just happened to be the person we were coaching because it was convenient, right? It didn't start out for me to be the p- patient or client or whatever, but then it just <laughs> became that, and it was amazing. So, in the process of this journey, I also had the advantage of working with like a certified coach who has chock full of insight about the minds and everything. Mm-hmm. And so I started like Michael Singer, 
In fact, she used to say to me all the time, like, that reminds me of the book, The Untethered Soul. But she said it about me so often that I finally just had to read it. We actually did, like, a review of it and everything, you know, where they were talking about the inner roommate and the critic in your head. And so I was actually able to, like, do some psychology stuff on my mind. I think that also helped me deal with the spirituality as well. I think I needed both at the same time to... So, like, get over those, like, what, what is happening right now? Yeah. yeah. I think that's good, too, that because I am, I'm a science person, healthcare, like, I, right. I'm that person, too. So, a lot of things I've been able to relate to each other, like the logical side and the spiritual side, I've been able to bring them together. So, that helps for me. And I think you always get what you need. I feel like my angels and spirit guides will sometimes show me things. And they'll give me like, okay, Regis is going to need the logical part of this too in order for her to understand. So sometimes that part will come to me too. Yeah. So I think it just depends on how your mind works. You know, you always get what you need. So you probably did need that. Yeah. Don't you feel like you've graduated recently? Yeah. In the last few days? Does I'm it, like, is that, is that I what I hope feel like? <laughs> Let's go. I'm, I'm move, let's move on to the next level here. I feel like the same thing. And I think it was like immediately after that conversation. Yeah. Uh, I started to feel it now too. It's immediately after that conversation where my energy just felt completely different. I'm, like, on two full moons worth of bad energy, right? (laughs) Like, it was a cycle. Uh, And I don't, again, don't follow that very closely. I take what I need, leave the rest. Uh, But I pay attention to see how that matters to me. That's how I can put all the pieces together. And so not this past full moon, but the one before that, started this downside where I couldn't, you know, feel anything. Yeah. That's when I called you. I texted you. Precisely. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And we've actually had moments in between where I, I I think I reached out the first time to you and then I was feeling it again a couple of weeks or months later. And then that's when you were like, Oh my gosh. So I'm like, yes, this is, this is how we needed to come together. Mm -hmm. If we didn't go through that bad, we wouldn't be talking right now. Yeah. (laughs) I don't like it though. I still don't like it though. (laughs) (laughs) Well, of course not. But now you have somebody to commiserate with in a way that, um, makes sense for you. Cause then you don't have to, sort through all the other junk to yeah. like just get some kind of satisfying answer or somebody's like, energy is in alignment with mine yeah so i think that's part of the thing so we complain about being isolated in a small town and not really having a lot of like-minded people around then yesterday i was in the grocery store i texted you had it when i came out i was just standing in line and it came through my mind like so clearly whatever i said to you like if we had all these people around us and we were distracted, we wouldn't be where we are today. And Absolutely. that's why I feel like it's like that graduate. I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah. I feel like I graduated the, the semester or something. <laughs> but, you know, those things are confirmations for me too because I've been getting signs and messages that the energy's shifting. December's going to be a different month for you and things are opening up. I keep opportunities are coming. Like I've been getting all these signs through cars through people randomly sending me dms on instagram and just Mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff just popping up on my computer saying like this is your time this is you know so yeah i think definitely some energy is shifting and things are changing for us it's funny to say that because a lot before december started i was getting a lot of like information like december is going to be amazing and it didn't start out so good yeah and i'm like really really (laughs) everybody's saying december i believe it yeah, I had forgotten, like, there's a whole rest of the month left, right. you know, apparently. But you think December, December 1st, here we go. That's not how it works, y'all. It's like yeah. a gradual type thing. <laughs> December 5th, my life still sucks, you know. And also, I'm going to say that, too. I don't say words like that uh, carelessly. I just said it, obviously, for yeah. for the drama. Example. I don't say those things anymore because I, I really believe in us being co-creators, right? Absolutely. So, your words matter. A thousand percent. So I had a friend the other day. He's like, God, you are a powerful manifester. And you know, I got mad because I was like, I am not manifesting this shit. <laughs> like all of this bad stuff, I'm not manifesting it. You're right. But I knew that I was in some way because I was stuck in this lack loop. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't think it was 
all my faults necessarily because you know it feels a certain way yeah um but i also had that realization where i don't feel like i am the person who i was and i keep trying to live like that person Ooh. in in a way like you know <laughs> you know when you wake you up saying I'm, that was like the yeah. words are right. literally out of my mouth you know when you wake up on a sunday in your other previous years you know and you have to have a coffee or whatever and do this and you get that feeling mm. that makes it a sunday yeah i keep trying to find those feelings again and they they're not coming to me and then i start to feel freaking out like oh my god i'm alone what is happening like this is scary and then one day i just had this thought like why are you keep trying to be that like you're so you've give, been given something new Live Ooh. like this. All right. Okay. Tisha, I've been told uh, that okay, uh, that I that you are becoming someone else. Stop trying to go back to what you were because you can't. And I question that of like, does that mean I can't go back to my old lifestyle or my old friends or is that all of it? My old career, like none of it. You can't, you yeah. know, go well, back get, to it. I get the advice too. I just didn't get what that meant i thought it meant to like a bad relationship or yeah. don't talk to this person who was mean to you i didn't understand that it literally meant every aspect like the, of my life yeah the essence and I still of my don't life completely <laughs> <laughs> i don't completely like embody it yet like really like yeah yeah can't go back though i'm like okay you're becoming someone new gotta go with it yeah so it's really uncomfortable and yeah. So that's another thing that I try to do with through the podcast is break down cliches that people say, but nobody really knows what they mean. Or like you hear this advice and you're like, okay, 700 people say that, but I have no freaking yeah. clue what you mean. And this is one of those um, experiences. So I think, I hope that you'll call out those things that don't make sense to you or something like that too, so that other people can go, oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I cannot believe it's been like an hour. Almost. I knew it would be. <laughs> I was like, I don't think it's going to be 30 minutes. <laughs> so what we briefly talked about, this is very organic and unplanned, uh, obviously. The only thing we kind of worked out ahead of time was we were thinking about doing some kind of categories of things that we want to manifest and again i said this already about without getting super personal i don't feel like we have to do those things but we can use words that represent something for the public that right. kind of can follow our journey but also without spilling the tea about everything that's going on yeah. in our lives um i suggested i'm gonna make a prettier one but what i suggested before the show was to have like to make an X. Now you said you already kind of do something like this. Yeah. But I was thinking about doing like an X formation. I probably should have used a Sharpie, but Can't we'll be okay. See that. <laughs> okay. I have a Sharpie. I have a Sharpie. So we're going to do like, I'm going to make a pretty one. Cause I do like uh visiony boards and stuff. Yeah. Um, what we hope to accomplish through the documentary is through the series. What, we hope to do it every week. We don't know how long it's going to take. We're just going to go by the seat of our pants like we usually yeah. do. I th also, I think I'm a generator, not a manifesting generator. So we okay. need to clarify that later. Okay. Because I think the generators are just the light in the world. And I'm cool with being <laughs> that. All right. So I'm going to put four... Uh, categories. And I've got a lot. Well, I have like six, but I broke it down to like the ones I'm focusing on right now. Um, okay. Yeah. Just for this experiment, obviously we have many more things and I'm being very generic, yeah. but then I can define these for myself later in a, in a, in a way that makes sense for me. Uh, what was the other thing? Okay. Okay. So I did, did you, did you do one? Oh. I wanted to see it. Oh, well, I wanted to see if we would write them in the same space. Uh, no, 
I just have a list of things. <laughs> okay. No, that's okay. The reason why I thought about doing th- it this way oh, okay. is because I actually do, and I know you pull cards too. We just pull different cards. So I just got a new set of um, numerology cards. Mm-hmm. I've only pulled it once and it was very dead on for what I had asked. I also really like these um, spirit guide cards that I'm not saying I was getting sick of them. I was just not getting the same kind of information I wanted. And yeah. my my birthday's Sometimes you have to switch up your tools. Right. So my birthday's coming. Now I've been using these for like, I don't know, six, seven months, eight longer maybe. And I was scared. It took me a long time to feel comfortable using these. Mm-hmm. And then I started to build a relationship with them. And I'm saying that for people who may be like, okay, well, what do I, yeah. how do I do it? I was totally scared. It comes with its own little book. It starts to make sense to you. I have to say there's like 50 something cards or something in this deck and i only probably at the max have ever seen seven yeah that's how it happens you're only see the ones you need to see yeah and it's always the same sort of ones about patience and things that that's what you're going through right now (laughs) yeah interesting anyway so i used those two and what i thought was by doing the formation like this Mm -hmm. it would help me um i have a pendulum and that was something that someone taught me like a year ago. I felt okay using it. I don't use it very often because I can never come up with the question. Yeah, to ask. Yeah, like that I feel on a, on the spot, right? Mm-hmm. So what I wanted to personally try uh, was to do it in this X formation so that I could ask specific questions about these four things. I don't usually do this. I usually just operate in my head of what's going on. I only write down things in my journal that are like complete epiphanies or an amazing experience or something like that. I do have a book of synchronicities as well. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to, so I guess I could ask this is like your process is, are you going to pull a card for each of those areas or you're just going to kind of focus on it later on and, detail out like what you want to manifest obviously yeah i want to set myself up for this particular for the documentary purposes because i have to document it in some fashion and this is kind of just what came to me yeah now whether we do it the same way or not okay i just wanted to have some kind of formula that perhaps other people could follow using their own tools however no pressure i mean everybody's example different right we are not like professors we're just two people oh, crazy enough to like share <laughs> this on youtube yeah yeah <laughs> for now, people who need it i do want to go back to because you say this all the time like am i doing it wrong yeah and i know we talked about this when we first met and i'm sure i gave you that confirmation like there's no like wrong way you do what you feel you need to do for you Yes. And if someone tells you that you're doing it wrong, well, then they need to kick rocks because they don't need to be your spiritual advisor because the ones who know, know that it works differently for each person. Like there is no set way you have to do this. So. Right. That's why I'm saying, <laughs> however, you, whatever your formula is, yeah. I just need something for myself. I think that I have not done because usually I pull a card to tell me what it is I'm supposed to focus on but not broken up in categories. Perhaps yeah. that's why I'm freaking stuck all the time. <laughs> to be more not, specific, right? Not that I'm doing it wrong. I'm just not um, going about it in a way that maybe would produce better results, right? right. That doesn't mean it's For wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because again, I've had some unexplainable experiences, like completely illogical of anything that I could ever imagine. And here we are. Mm-hmm. However, <laughs> I also feel like, prime example, um, I know I'm meant to do the podcast and I know I'm meant to help people th- through that and whatever else we're doing through all of the things we're doing. And I would often ask, like, if I'm meant to do this, why isn't the universe supporting me financially? Why, why do I have to struggle? Don't get me wrong. I could pay my bills and it's, I'm not like, 
um, it could be way worse. Right. right. Don't get me wrong. But I also, and I don't often think like, well, I'm putting all this effort in and it's not, not I don't have that attitude because I'm so optimistic. <laughs> like, right. It, it's going to happen when it's meant to happen. Whatever's going to happen. I don't even know. I don't even know what I want to happen, honestly. Yeah, but we still question it. Right. So, but that's sort of where I'm, this is where I'm coming from now. I know I can manifest amazing things. I have the receipts. However, in my day-to-day life, I feel incredibly stuck. I feel like you and I are stuck on the same points of life, mm-hmm. um, physically moving, not being in a community that feels as supportive as perhaps it could. I don't know what else you wrote down. Mine are um, a move, meaning a physically moving somewhere, finances, career, and like-minded people. Those are my four. Okay. My four principal points. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let me try to sum mine up because they change kind of daily. Um, originally, when we when you asked me that about what your categories are, um, and I said I already kind of have something like that, was um, one of the books that really helped me was The Desire Map by Danielle Laporte. Mm-hmm. And she talks about your core desire feelings. And so she has like different categories. And so I used to kind of use those as my categories for manifesting Um but the three that I wrote down are body and wellness, career and finance, and relationships. And then obviously under those, there's an umbrella of things you could put under there. Relationships could be friendships, romantic relationships, right. um, collaborations, things like that. But um, yeah, I think <laughs> so part of that, like wellness would be obviously moving is a big thing for me too. living somewhere where I feel like my energy is supported, like-minded people. Um, I definitely want that career and finance. Those that's probably like the biggest one I think right now is my career and finance because I just feel like I'm supposed to be at a different level when I'm not there yet. So and I really want to focus on that. Uh, and same for me. That's why I just wrote the career. Oh, I, mine are two separate things, but yeah. Here we are now being called to do this, this, because we want to, we like being creative, we like talking to each other, so why not record it, right? And we're still a thousand percent willing to go into it, knowing it's probably going to cost us money. It's, you know. Yeah, but I feel like I I have to, you know? Yeah. I I do want to point out, and I'll make, I just want to make this very clear. Uh, We just agreed, and we didn't even talk about this. (laughs) Personally, uh, we just agreed that we could release this to the slightly unmeditated um, w- website and YouTube channel simply because the resources are already in place. Yeah. This is not to say it's all about me. It just so happened. I don't feel like starting another YouTube channel. Hey, and I feel you there because <laughs> I don't want to be there. But with my thing for the channel, I've always knew it was going to be a collaborative effort. I can't do any of this stuff alone. Yeah. I and I started I, to feel that way. Like, I've been doing it alone for so long. I need I, a team or someone else. <laughs> and this is why we're meant to collaborate. Like, this is, yeah. I think it's a beautiful statement that two people from completely different areas of the United States have a lot of di- differences, a lot of similarities, could be potentially competitors to each other if you look at it that way. And I don't see that in any way. I no. just like. Let's just all get together, together and, and yeah. do this. Big, yeah. One big happy family. <laughs> right, right. And then when things get really great, then the lawyers will figure that out. Like, yeah, I, exactly. I'm not worried about that part. <laughs> Work that part out later. I care about the day-to-day, you know, this is therapy for me. This is more is. Um, whatever. And, well, for people who are watching, we talked once on the podcast um Maybe once in between that and then like a few times in between just leading up to maybe an email. That's it. Yeah. So let's just say at the most we've had 10 conversations. Yeah. (laughs) Here we are like finishing each other's sentences. I'm like, maybe. Yeah. That, That sounds about right. Probably. I like to bring that up for people who are feeling like. Nobody gets me that 
maybe it's not going to be your neighbor or your childhood friend that gets you, but someone is out there. Someone out there resonates. You know, listen to podcasts, read people's blogs, like reach out. People are making this content for the same reasons we are just trying to connect with other people. I want to say something on that because when I had my very, very, very first psychic reading, it was over the phone, something like that. It was some radio show I called into when I was in my early twenties and it still resonates with me today is he told me, you have got to get out there and find your soul family. Your Mm. soul family is out there for you and you going through life and experiencing things. That's how you're going to meet them. And so Mm -hmm. I had never heard the term soul family. He was like, we all have a soul family. Souls we're meant to connect with, who are on our same vibration, who get us. Like, they are out there. We assume that, like like you said, it's going to be a family member or someone close to you or someone you know. He's like, no, you're going to meet, like, strangers who you just immediately vibe with. Yeah. (laughs) And who you're on the same wavelength with. He was like, because they're they're your soul family. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So... That has always stuck with me to where when I meet people and I just immediately vibe with them. Okay. This is someone from my soul family, which to me is family. (laughs) And it's like super effortless. In my experience, it's been super effortless. It's the ones that I try to force and then I'm disappointed. Like, oh, I thought that was a connection and it wasn't. Mm -mm. Then, you know, that's a lesson. Not necessarily a connection. So the episode we did together was literally our first conversation And if people can go listen to it and just probably could hear the frequency buzz through the back running in the back of the show of that. (laughs) So that when I actually titled it, Raising the Vibe with Regis, there was no other thing I could think of. Yeah, Yeah, because it was just so, um, it it was probably my first experience talking to somebody that, that was a stable high frequency. I've been around people who have like bursts of energy and then I'm like, what happened to it? And then I don't get them anymore. So I've struggled to understand that. Now I get it, but yeah, different vibes, different frequency. So maybe we'll table our practices to actually do them through this week. And so we record another episode um, and then just from now on, come back and report back how things are going, yeah, going and how yeah. you're manifesting or not manifesting. And, um, yeah. I know we're going to hold each other accountable. I'm going to do some videos and pictures of things as they come up and happen just so people can kind of see. Um, I do a lot of that too on like my Instagram stories mm-hmm. when I'm inspired, I yeah. will post stuff so people can see like, this is my um, ritual for the day, you know, Oracle cards or whatever I'm doing that day. I try to post stuff like that. Yeah. I'm going to at least try to account for what I'm doing that I'm actually working again. I, I do so much mentally that I think if I brought it maybe down to paper, things would make more sense, but I'm a writer and I hate sitting in front of the computer. (laughs) And you hate journaling. I, yeah. Well, that's why, because I love it. When I try to write in a journal, my mind switches in a different way. I've always yeah. wanted to talk to another writer and find out if this was an issue or if it's just me. Um, but my my brain switches into writing mode. It's a, it's a different feeling. Oh, yeah. I can see that because you do it for a living. And what I'm trying to... Conv- what's going on in my mind... It's I just not coming out on paper. <laughs> that's primarily my problem. I just had that epiphany the other day uh, on a podcast because so maybe you're supposed to talk about it. So instead of writing it, here we are, right? Like exactly right. So but that's why I started a podcast because when I started my business, which it's been five years, y'all five years since I started my first business entrepreneurial journey, it's still going, but whatever I was doing newsletters, email newsletters. And every week when I would get ready to type it, I'd be like, I was like, you know what? I would prefer to just say this. And then yeah. that's when I was like, just start a podcast. Yeah. So. Well, my, this was n- not in my wheelhouse at all. And here yeah. I'm now doing video for YouTube. That if someone had asked me, I would have laughed so hard. I know, right? It's just this whole separate part of the journey that there's something about you, you talk about authenticity, you encourage other people to do it, then you got to show up and be yeah. what you say, practice what you preach. Is you very, have to, yep. 
Yeah, and I also believe in a do unto others. So, like, if I'm telling you, perhaps. And, and karma. I <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to tell. I just hit myself in the face, as I said, about being authentic. I don't. People can follow however the journey is. All I think our goal is to be a representation for things so they're a little less woo-woo. People are going to know what they need, but maybe they don't have that person to be like, should I pull a spirit card to figure out what I'm supposed to do for the rest yeah, of the day? Yeah, exactly. Asked me a year ago, I'd have been like, pull a no. what, where? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So That's voodoo. Yeah, that's what I probably would No, say. tarot cards are the devil. Yeah, well, again, I've, I've had to overcome a lot of fear, but that's also part of the norm. Because it is, as we learn that the things we learn in society are fear, it's, you know, for whatever reason, people just don't want to feel like they're all connected to each other. I don't know why, yeah. but yeah. So that's a whole other episode. It but. is. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go down the rabbit hole. Yes. So I have my, I will make it pretty for next time. This is my four, um, Mm -hmm. quadrants categories or yeah, yes. quadrants mm -hmm. and then what i'm probably going to do through this week is like pull a card for each thing figure out where that goes document the synchronicities that come up around it uh also i'm sure we'll be talking about synchronicities that come up for us personally um i will say too that some synchronicities are so complex i just saw this on a documentary the other day uh-huh that made me feel some like validated, I guess is the good word where yeah. they're so complex that explaining them to someone else would lose the magic. So just kind of keep those to yourself. So. Yes. I know that. Okay. So d some so stuff you just can't. And that comes with your spiritual intuition being developed. Like, you yes. know, when you're supposed to speak on certain things and when you're not, Yes. Like some things you feel, mm, I don't know if I should say anything about that yet. Let me just yeah. wait, let right. it manifest. Yeah. That's a hard lesson that I've had to learn is mm -hmm. telling everybody my business before my business happens yes. and then it just gets shut down. Like I've learned that that's been a hard lesson for me. I had done a year of my podcast before I told any, anybody that I did a podcast. Now that's a lot. <laughs> I didn't go that long. I did not. I mean, I wasn't hiding it from people. I had a yeah. Facebook page or whatever. I did not link myself to the page. I did not publicly announce that it was you, the one on the page. Yeah. Link yourself um, to it. Except for the few like minded people who, are, who I knew would get it, yeah. who would benefit from it. Um, and then it was a good year because I just didn't want other people's, I was aware enough of how energy. energy works. Yeah. I just didn't want to deal with it because I've been dealing with it my whole life. So I'm just now understanding the terminology of a lot of things, I, I think. is the, the That was point. a hard lesson for me learned this year. I went through a lot. Losing money, losing friends, all because I opened my mouth and intertwined two things that shouldn't have been intertwined yet. Blew up, so. How else are you going to know unless you learn? You know, God, you got to learn. I felt like I should have known this because this is not nah. the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had to make sure you knew. Oh, God. They, they That's had to another, make another story, but I've got some some uh, stories to tell over the past two years of things that have happened. Well, I think this will be a great start, I hope. Yeah. Anybody that's actually watching, I hope. Um we can filter stuff through. I don't even know if there's comments on YouTube. I believe yes, there is. Yes, there are. Um, but, you know, we can filter it through the Slightly Unmeditated page email. However, we'll we're going to have a web page on the slightlyunmeditated.com with both of our emails, both of our information. Yeah, people reach out to us. Like what you say, they can reach out to you directly or me. However, that's it just works. how we'll yeah. do it. Whoever yeah. you vibe with, that's what I say. There you go. Or both of us. I mean, we're just both awesome. So. The question, though, how do you feel yes. about going live? <laughs> well, I think we could once we have established okay. uh, what's we'll going see. on because it becomes a journey. I was just That could be thinking, a special event. I was just thinking about this today. I was vacuuming my house, and I was <laughs> thinking that I'm a person who, obviously, I'm a storyteller because I do write stories. But it, it's 
Are you that person who it's not as fun unless you could share it with other people? Yeah. Okay. That's probably, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I was thinking about that when good thing happens or something funny. Like, I just want to go tell everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And, all that. and so live events would be really good for that, for those kinds of situations yeah. where I just need to get it out get it so out. I can move yeah. the energy. I'm like yeah. that. Very spontaneous. Like, I got to say this right now. I got to tell. <laughs> yeah. In my younger years, I could probably just, we didn't have cameras back then, you know, I could yeah. probably just jump on now or cause just a wee bit more prep work. So I will, yeah. <laughs> but I'm willing, I'm open to it. Okay. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited. All right. Me too. All right. So this is episode one of better than I can imagine a docu, a documentary experiment. <laughs> I know it's going to take a while getting used to. Yeah. With Tisha and Regis, and we, I am from the Slightly Unmeditated podcast, and you are from the Spiritual Shit You Need to Know podcast. Yes. So if you're jonesing for more insight from us to sage, <laughs> sage people, right. you can listen to our episodes wherever you get a podcast, right? Absolutely. All right. Well, I guess we'll see you next week then. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye.